New Zealand, I think, is probably the prime candidate to become the most electric economy in the world. Hello and welcome to the Everything Electric Show, uh, this time coming from a rather unusual place, a cherry farm in Otago on the South Island of New Zealand. This is a 100% electric farm. Seriously, there's no diesel used here at all. There's six hectares of cherries on this farm and we're just walking past the rows now and they've just been harvested so all the big juicy cherries have already been picked and, and sent off. The tractors are electric, all the machinery they use here is electric, including the truck that takes the cherries off to the distribution centre. I think this is a, a really shining example of what can be done today and what should be done, particularly in countries like New Zealand, who have to import all their fossil fuel from really a long, long way away. And this is the sort of thing we talk about at our live shows, the next of which is in Sydney, Australia, on the 7th, 8th and 9th of March. Be there. We've teamed up with Duracell Energy to celebrate their brilliant ecosystem of home energy products and their platinum homeowner offer by giving away a Duracell bunny. To win, simply watch to the end and answer a question about the Fully Charged Show. I come from a technology background. I spent 12 years in Sydney building technology startups. In 2019, I sold one of them and that gave Rebecca, uh, my wife and I, a chance to move back to New Zealand. I'm an entrepreneur looking for a new opportunity. And Rebecca, um, she's a financial controller who just loves a bargain. Right. And uh, we realized really quickly that this is what we wanted to, yeah. do, to do next. So we bought a farm that was just ra ra um, rearing sheep and it was not making yield. Oh, so there weren't it. cherries here at all? No, no, no. no, no. It, was, oh, it wow. was basically just a, uh, I think it might have had 80, 100 sheep on it, something right. like that. Um, and it wasn't making good yield on the value of the land. Yeah. New opportunity arose. Uh, we quickly decided that we're going to plant 9,300 cherry trees. Wow. So starting with a blank canvas, Turns out uh, cherry farms need about 21 machines. Right. And um, my love of technology, my want to do something in climate, and also we were at the point in New Zealand where fossil fuels were so expensive that the lifetime ownership cost of the, the fossil fuel machines ended up just being so much more right. than what the electric versions were. Um, so we just started buying more and more electric machines. Not necessarily thinking we'd go fully electric, Right. Um, but in the space of two or three years, ended up fully electric because the numbers stacked up to do so. Right. And then you've also, so you've to just quickly do the numbers because everywhere I look, I see, oh, there's solar panels on the roof. There's solar panels in the field, solar panels on your house, which isn't as common here as in Australia. I'm very used to everywhere. You know, yep. It's very common for people to have solar, but you've got a lot of solar here. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the short answer is, is that if you're running diesel machines, it's very hard to create your own diesel. Yeah. Right. And so therefore solar panels don't necessarily have a great payback period. But right. when you get to the point of running nothing but electric machines, yeah. then all of a sudden you can utilize energy that you can create yourself on your home or on your farm. And solar panel ROI is just phenomenally good. Right. right? And so in the case of the farm, uh, when you add up the total capital cost um, and you look at the production over the lifetime of a solar panel, it works out to be about seven cents New Zealand per kilowatt hour. Right. That's a fraction of and the that, price. So of what, when you say that cost, that is the cost of every aspect of install, of buying the panels, installing them, wiring them, everything. The right. whole thing, seven cents a kilowatt hour. It's probably 26 cents a kilowatt hour from New Zealand's electricity grid. Right. And it's probably 80 cents a kilowatt hour on diesel. So I, I it's a tenth of the price. Yeah, and I just quickly want to say seven cents a, a New Zealand is about uh, three pence. About that. So yep. you're paying three pence a kilowatt hour for all your electricity. Correct. Actually. In total, that saves us about 40,000 New Zealand dollars a year, right. which is the same as adding another 1,600 trees to our orchard right. in terms of EBIT, yeah. right? And so the thing that we have to overcome is there's a larger upfront capital cost. But even when you finance that additional cost, it works out to be cheaper than the additional cost of using fossil fuels right. over electricity. Right. Right. Um, Rebecca's the financial controller. She did all the spreadsheets and put all this together and bang, we were a fully electric orchard. Right. You've got solar, but you've also got batteries. So you've got big battery storage. I mean, 300 nothing like kilowatt you know, hours. 300 kilowatt hours. Yep. Okay. So I think I've got 26 
at homes and you've got 300. I mean, the, the, thing, the thing is New Zealand's electricity uh, wholesale market um, goes through fluctuations. Yeah. Now in the winter, it goes through sort of daily peaks in the right. morning and the afternoon when everyone wants to use electricity all at the same time. And we run on hydro in this country, which means right. when we start to run out of water, when it's been dry for a long period of time, the wholesale rate goes up. Right. So having a lot of solar protects us against a long-term high right. wholesale rate of electricity and actually can turn into a real and, and revenue your, your, spinner for us. Um, and your grid connection, the way you pay for electricity from the grid is the wholesale, you're we paying pay, the wholesale we, price. We you're import not, and export right. the wholesale rate. And yep. is, that's not generally, is that generally the case with any not, a, a not normal generally, household? Not generally, but this right. is sort of what I'm discovering, especially an opportunity for farmers where we have the space to generate and yeah. we have the space to store is that we are in a position where we can buy power when it's cheap and we can sell it when it's expensive. Right. We can generate to hedge against the long wholesale spot price yeah. um, and also we can use our batteries to arbitrage the daily rate as well. So yeah. July last year I bought power at five cents a kilowatt hour and sold it at nine dollars a kilowatt hour probably an hour later. <laughs> Right, that's 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 yeah. the nature of the game here. Well, if you Zealand. told a market trader this is how much this is how much your wholesale cost is, is what you're selling it for, they would go bonkers exactly. with that sort of jump. Yeah. Exactly right. And so these opportunities might not exist forever. No. Um, mainly, the more and more people do this, the smoother the spot price gets, yeah. the lower the spot price gets. But I see that as being an amazing opportunity yeah. for New Zealand, where we have cheap renewable energy yeah. for everyone. So the farming sector has been traditionally seen as really hard to decarbonise. It's totally reliant on fossil fuel machinery. And managing to shift off that will make an enormous difference across the world. This machine is a specifically perfect example of what can be done. So traditionally, a spraying machine like this one will take up, will have a thing called a power takeoff. It connect, connects to the tractor. The tractor uses diesel to turn that, the, the shaft which then runs all the pumps or whatever it's got to do. This one is completely different. This one plugs in to the electric tractor and it uses a little electric motor down there to power the pumps and the fans that are on here. This is a spraying machine that sprays the, the cherry trees during their growing season uh, with uh, fungicide and pesticide and nu nutrients and everything. It's got a really important role on the farm and it uses vastly less energy than traditional pumps that really do our real energy hogs. This is the only one of its kind in the world. There are no others of these. This is actually produced in New Zealand and exported to the USA for use with, on vineyards. So the New Zealanders are very proud of this machine and rightly so. The one thing that we're, and any viewers of this show are very aware of is electric cars, they're ubiquitous, they're becoming ubiquitous. Yes. It's an understood technology, but in terms of tractors, of, of spraying machinery, of anything to do with agriculture, it's still, I mean, they exist. I know there are electric tractors and there are electric combine harvesters and everything, but they're super niche and really in development. But you've got, you. You've only got, so there's no fossil fuel machinery at all. In no, here. we have an electric tractor, which um, was actually the final piece of the puzzle for right. us. So most technology you could get in New Zealand, there is the electric frost fighting fans that we had to put, import from South Africa. Right. And there's the electric tractor that we had to bring over from California. Right. Um, in the case of the electric tractor, it involved going to California, telling them our story, and convincing the board of a billion dollar tech startup to send to one send of their one prototype tractor. tractors over to the other side of the right. Pacific yeah. uh, to New Zealand. Um, but that's been a great partnership that we've been, oh, it's been two years now, I think right. that we've had that tractor. Um, and that was the final piece of the puzzle. And you know, it cost $2 an hour to run on en you know, energy right. compared to probably $13, $14 an hour right. of diesel. This tractor and everything that's managed to achieve, right. we basically do everything that a 90 horsepower diesel tractor can do with a 55 horsepower electric right, tractor. Right, wow. Instant torque changes the game. So in total, they've got 160 kilowatts of solar generation on the farm. That's some of that's here on these ground mounted arrays, but it's also on the roof of the warehouses, it's on the roof of the barns, it's on the roof of their house. They can produce 200 megawatt hours of electricity a year. The farm itself uses 100 megawatt hours a year, so they are producing more than they can use. They, they then store a lot of that in their 300 kilowatt hour battery system. 
Now, there's an interesting reason as to why this farm isn't 100% renewably powered, and that is because of one specific thing that's very specific to cherries, and that is they need to run fans at night at specific times of year to help stop the frost, which would damage the fruit, which would mean they'd lose a lot of their crop. They have to use electricity from the grid to do that. So this farm is produces more energy that can use, but it can't quite sustain that. So that's, it's 80% completely self-powered but that other 20% is, is being used at critically important times in the winter when they're trying to reduce frost damage. So beyond the farm though, you're also involved in, now I don't know how to say it, rewiring. Oh, we'll forgive you on that. So the uh, <laughs> indigenous name for New Zealand or the Maori name for New Zealand is Aotearoa. Aotearoa, Aotearoa. okay. Rewiring Aotearoa. Yeah. Um, and yeah, essentially we are a, what we call a think-do tank. Right. Which is all about figuring out how to electrify New Zealand as fast as we can. There's about 10 million fossil fuel machines in New Zealand that right. make up 25% of our gross emissions. Right. So replace those, we go a yeah. long way to uh, hitting our climate goals by 2030. So yeah. that's the big thing. How do we accelerate that um, as fast as we can and also represent the everyday New Zealander in this energy transition because there is a lot of people like fighting for the pie at the moment. Yeah. But the most rewarding pie of all is the electricity that we can generate on our own rooftops. Yeah. And there's not a lot of people there that are arguing to make that easier at the moment. Right, right. If every house household in, in New Zealand had solar on the roof, the impact would be Well, I mean, profound. put it this way, the 10 million machines in New Zealand that we're talking about, um, to electrify all of them, we're going to need about twice as much electricity. Right. If 80% of the homes in New Zealand had solar on the roof, you know that's an extra 60% renewable electricity for right. New Zealand's electricity system. If all of the 50,000 farms in New Zealand do do yeah, have done what I've done, done yeah. that's another 40%. So between right. the households and the farms alone, you can do all it. that generation capacity is yeah. there. It's, a, it's actually quite simple to yeah. solve. A lot of people argue, oh, the grid can't handle this, but the grid can't handle this if we continue to behave in the exact same way that we're behaving. Yeah. But actually, there is such an opportunity now to be smarter, to make the customers part of the infrastructure of New Zealand's energy system, yeah. just drive down the price and not have to build out a huge amount of infrastructure to get the job done. And I mean, also, I mean, it is, I think the one thing, because I think this relates to exactly what you're doing here is, you, I, and I'd love to ask you about this, but the, if you do an example, which is a solid concrete thing. Here's the figures, here's the technology, here's what happens over years, not six months, not an experiment on a university campus. This is a, this is a business that has to make money. If you can show people that on a farm level, that's amazing okay. and other farmers. But then if you show that on a national level, so you go, this is what New Zealand does. This is how much we spend. This is how, where, where it goes. This is our economy. You know, Correct. That's, that is a huge, that's bigger than the actual impact of not burning fossil fuel in a sense. Uh, that's what, I, that's what I'm most proud of. Like the primary sector of New Zealand, I've had 12,000 people in the last four years come visit come this visit. orchard. Right. Right. Wow. It's huge. Wow. Um, and many of those are farmers. Right. And they're very curious. And when they come here, the big thing that I try to promote is I'm not here to tell you how to run your business. I'm right. not here to tell you what you should be doing, right? So it's okay. You can yeah. unfold your arms, you can take it yes. easy. <laughs> I'm simply going to show you what I've done. I'm simply going to show you the numbers. And this yeah. is new technology paired with a very, very traditional business. Right. And you take away from it what you want. Yeah. And every dairy farmer from Southland is going, should I better put some dairy, I better, better put some solar panels on, on my the, on dairy the barns. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the thing about solar panels as well is there's not a lot of staff maintenance involved with them right. you stick them there yeah, the yeah. once they're there they're there yeah. the main thing i want to make sure that new zealand does is we continue to be a world leading food producer yeah right? just just like yeah. what your farmers in the uk they're very very good food producers we need to keep producing food yeah. the world needs food yeah right so we keep doing that but how do we integrate the two technologies together to make farming more resilient right yeah. in cherries i get one paycheck a year at least yes. now with this i get a small check every well, month right. for the generation that we do yeah the one big goal that I have for this year for New Zealand is to get finance sorted for everybody. Right. So one of, the, one of the big problems that exists in the New Zealand market, which makes it unfair, is that the, guy, the companies that own all the poles and wires, the utility companies, they can get interest rates really well, they can get good debt, low cost, right. and they can build poles and wires and charge it back to the customer, yeah. right? The customers of New Zealand don't have access to yeah. that level of finance, yeah. right? Because it's 5.5% on the mortgage if you have a mortgage. Yeah. 
and they're really, really hard to get. So therefore, it's not actually an equal playing field. Right. And so one of the things that we really want to do is try and figure out how to get universal finance sorted for all customers in New Zealand at a low finance rate of say three, three and a half percent so everybody can take advantage of this technology. Every now and then on the Everything Electric Show, we end up at the most incredible places seeing incredible things. Forest Lodge Orchard is definitely right up there at the top of it. I'd really like to thank Mike and the whole team that made this possible for us to come here and visit today. What an amazing achievement. Please do tell your friends about this. This stuff, changing the way we grow food and we produce food is really critically important and it is possible to make it much, much better. Tell your mates to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And as always, if you have been, Thank you for watching. We're really excited to partner with Duracell Energy to showcase their amazing renewable energy solutions. If you want to reduce your energy bills and join the renewable energy transition, installing home battery storage and solar panels at home is a great way to start. Duracell Energy's ecosystem of products typically partners with solar panels, but they can be used just as effectively without it, particularly for electric vehicle owners or anyone looking to take control of their energy. And with Duracell Energy's Platinum Homeowner Offer, viewers can get a custom service that pairs you with top quality products and the best installers in your area. Your installation also comes with a 20-point check, a six-month performance review, system health checks at three- and ten-year periods, and outstanding local UK customer support every step of the way. Plus, Duracell Energy's batteries, inverters, and EV chargers work together on one easy-to-use app. With features like dynamic tariff integration and grid services, you'll be able to maximise your return. Ready to get started? You can get your quote today. And don't forget, we're also giving away a Duracell Energy Bunny in every episode. Just answer the question about fully charged by following the link in the description. Good luck!